Okay, what is the tip of the day? It's going to be an LM311, 311. And they're cute little, uh, cute little eight pin packages. Um, and it is a comparator. It's, uh, here's kind of a block diagram. Regular comparator, it has a open collector output. It has a, a floating emitter and collector, which is kind of cool. You can do different things with that. And it has balance, so if you want to really dial these things in, you can put a uh, potentiometer to balance the input current of the, uh, of the, of the inputs. Um, it is pretty low, though, already. Uh, maximum input bias current, 300 nanoamps. Maximum input offset current, 70 nanoamps. So it is pretty good. It's fast, too, 165 nanoseconds, so it's pretty quick. Um, if you want one that has even better specs for these input things, there is an LF311, uh, LF311. I couldn't find one. I thought I had one, but I couldn't find it, uh, LM311. Anyway, we'll play with the 311 today. Uh, one of the cool things about this is you can drive them plus and minus. Uh, so they have a, a, a plus voltage and a minus voltage. So you can run them on, like, say, plus and minus 12 volts. And you can do zero crossing detection and things like that with the plus and minus voltages. But they're also able to run on single 5 volt supply. And that's the circuit we're going to use today. We're going to use a 5 volt circuit, uh, ground and 5 volts. And uh, what's it say here? Applications, desktop PCs, body control module. I was always love these things. <laughs> like you can use these anywhere. Um, white goods, uh, not not red goods, but white goods. Um, let's see here. R building automation oscillators. Ah, that's the one we're going to do today. Yay! Here, check oscillators and peak detectors. Okay, so we're going to do an oscillator today, and I'm going to get the idea from the Data sheet. There's applications here in the back. And we're going to be using this one here. Um, so you look at this and, and you go, oh, okay, uh, I don't quite figure it out. Because they always draw them weird. Just to, just to fit on the page, I guess. Let's draw this a bit differently though, okay? First of all, we're going to have the uh, we're going to have the op amp or the uh, comparator, and it's going to have plus and minus, plus V and minus V, right? But we're going to ground it, so we're going to run this one off of uh, plus 5 volts, okay? So that's easy. Then their uh, open collector, open drain. Okay, we're just going to tie this to ground. Okay, that's easy. And we're just going to uh, put a pull-up resistor here for the output, and here's our output. Okay, so here's out. Plus the plus five here. All right, so that looks that looks a lot better than this messy thing here. Okay, so that's just simple stuff. And then um, we are going to take the uh, the plus side. Okay, we're going to move it over here, and it's got a hundred k and a hundred k and ground. Okay, so that makes sense. So that's all it's doing here. Hundred k, hundred k. So we have. 2.5 volts here, right? Oops, you can't see any of that. I've been drawn away and you can't see a darn thing. Sorry about that. <laughs> Rookie. I should I should practice more, you know. I should maybe do more of these. I'll get better at it with time. Um, so here we have a 2K pull up. So like I said, we're gonna just hook this to ground, plus five, output. So that looks really, really familiar. On the plus, we're just gonna put a voltage divider, so we have two and a half volts. So we can't do zero crossing because we have ground and five volts. We need something right in the middle. So we're going to create two and a half volts by putting these uh, 100K, 100K. Can you see both of this at the same time? If I go back out, out just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so 100K, 100K. And then uh, on the other side, okay, the other side, we're going to come down here. And we're going to put a capacitor, okay? And we're going to take that output. And we're going to bring it all around here. And then we're going to do this, okay? So this is 0.1 microfarad, and this is 50K. 50K. And so, you know what that does? The output's going to be a...
signal between 0 and 5 volts. And it's going to come along here into this uh, low-pass filter. And it's just going to basically uh, create a DC voltage basically right here in the middle. This is going to kind of remember it. And we're going to bring this uh, output. We're going to bring it right around here. And so we're going to have 2.5 volts here. And we're going to have 2.5 two volts here. And so this thing is going to be right on the verge of flipping. Okay, so if, if one side's a little bit higher, it's going to flip that way. If one side's a little bit lower, it's going to flip that way. So that's how we're going to adjust this thing. We're going to put this two and a half. We're going to bring this output. We're going to bring it around, and it's just barely ready to go. All right, so we need one more thing. We need feedback. In order to have an oscillator, you need feedback, okay? So where are we going to get the feedback? Well, we're going to bring it this way, okay? And we're going to go through a crystal. And that's going to be our feedback. So, like I said, this thing's almost ready to go. And the output's going to flop. And it's going to come through here. And it'll go whoop, through the crystal. And it'll flop the other way. And flip, flip, flip. It'll go up and down, and up and down, and up and down, and up and down. Up and down okay? And uh, the crystal will limit what can come through. Okay? It's going to have a resonant frequency. And uh, that will help us out. So, anyway, I think maybe this diagram, although messy, is more understandable than this diagram, which has lots of weird things. I don't know. It's just drawn funny. Don't like the way it's drawn. Don't like it. Okay, so let's uh, let's hook this up and uh, see what there is to see. Okay, so I have the uh, circuit hooked up here. I have the LM311 down there. And the crystal that I'm using is a uh, clock crystal. It's 32.7, no, 32.767, I think. Uh, kilohertz and um or is it three yeah i think that's right anyway you, you know what it is it's one of those one of those guys um so let's see if it's doing its thing and look at that there it is uh it's going up and down up and down up and down at 32.765 kilohertz perfect all right so this all works fine and dandy um so you remember we had that feedback here, right? Oops. We had this feedback and we're using the crystal as a feedback, right? Let's use uh let's use a capacitor as a feedback instead, okay? And so I'm going to pull out my crystal. I'm going to put in 120 picofarads. So instead of the crystal get it to go on the board here. Oh, come on. Sometimes you just can't get them. There we go. Can't get them to go. Uh, there. All right. So I put in 120 picofarads instead. And ah, it works. <laughs> this time we're getting 11.9 kilohertz. Uh, so that's what a that's what uh, 120 picofarads does. So this will make it just fine oscillator. You just put in a capacitor instead of a uh, instead of a crystal. Now it's not going to be stable with temperature, and it's not going to be accurate and stuff. But if you just want an oscillator, you just just uh, substitute it with a uh, with a um, capacitor. All right, and let's go ahead and try instead of 120 picofarads, let's put in my favorite capacitor, which is 10 nanofarads, otherwise known as 0.01 microfarads. And let's see what it does. And whoa, it is oscillating. And it is very, very slow. Very, very slow. There we go. 395 hertz. So quite slow with uh, 10 nanofarads. All right. So what I'm going to show you now is uh, we were looking on the output. Now I'm going to bring another scope probe in and we're going to look right here. Okay, we're going to look right where this is wiggly up and down. Let's see how it wiggles. Remember, this one's just steady. It's just a steady voltage. But this is the one that wiggles up and down. So let's take a look at that plus input. All right. It's on channel two and there's our plus input. So that little capacitor just uh, uh, charges down and charges down, charges down. Boop. 
whoop, so start start at negative and it's going up, and now it's starting to the positive and it's going down. The thing's flip bobbing back and forth, so that's what that's what that does. Let's go ahead and put in that 120 picofarads. Let's see what he looks like. He looks faster. But same thing. Up and down, and up and down, and up and down, and up and down. Okay. And then let me put in the crystal. Ooh, look at that. Uh, so the crystal is more fancy. <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely more fancy. So I'm not a... I don't really have a good explanation for why it's more of a sine wave. Um, it is a resonant circuit, so I think it's just uh, uh, inductive on on either... Or not inductive, but it's... Uh, its reactance changes on either side of its resonant point, right? So if it's a little bit low, its reactance changes. If a little bit high, its reactance changes. Whereas the capacitors kind of just do it from one side. The uh, uh, crystals get to do it from both sides. That make any sense at all? Yeah, probably not, but that's a very big hand wave. But anyway, it's very interesting to see the, uh, it's a sine wave and you can kind of see where it's switching, right? Where it's switching a little glitch on the on the circuit there, um, but yeah, and it's very 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 stable. All right, so fun with uh, fun with comparators. If you're going to build an oscillator, don't build them out of op amps. Build them out of uh, comparators. You'll be much happier. Uh, they really like to be uh, in this type of circuit. A lot of times. Op amps don't like to go into saturation and then they'll get stuck or they just won't operate very well or they don't like to go all the way to the rails and stuff. Anyway, comparators are made to go rail to rail and the input circuit usually has some diodes on them so it keeps them from going out of range. Um, and so, yeah, use a comparator if you're going to do a circuit like the one that we just did. You can do circuits like these. Comparators are the way to go.